It often amazes me how the magic of the fireside tales can strike in the most unlikely of places. It doesn't just have to happen to your celebrities, to your politicians, to your kings and queens. It can happen to almost anyone, be it your friend, your neighbor, your fam one of your family members. Um, it could even happen to you. And it also has a fondness for occurring to people that don't really want it in their lives, uh, that would prefer a life of order and uh, of, of being just, just normal. And this is a story of uh, when it occurred to one such person. Uh, it was a man by the name of Farmer Joseph. And Farmer Joseph was a man who liked routine. He liked to get up every day, um, uh, take a shower, get dressed, go downstairs, eat breakfast, kiss his wife, and then go out and work in the fields for hours at a time. And he liked his life this way. He believed that at his age... Any change was probably for the worse, and it was better for things to be predictable. Uh, but as it so happens, life is anything but predictable. And one day Farmer Joseph was out, and he was raking some leaves out of his garden, when he looked around and realized that there were a lot of chickmunks in the yard now, hundreds of them. He was having a chickmunk infestation. And they had been causing quite a bit of mayhem at his house. They had uh, chewed the side of his house, uh, chewed at the wood, and they were they were all nesting in the hayloft. And uh, the chickmunks had um, they had started to eat at his garden, and uh, they had even thrown water balloons at him from up in the tree. Might have been joking there, but they had been causing quite a problem. And he had tried to get his dog John Wayne to to fight them off. But John Wayne had waged war on them, and the chickmunks had won. And um, Farmer Joseph was beginning to doubt whether he should have given his dog the name jo John Wayne at all. Anyways, Farmer Joseph decided that he would have to get rid of these chickmunks. He would have to find some way. So that night, he went up into his study and he set to work. He began to draw up plans for hours, trying to come up with some way that he could get rid of the chickmunks. And as he sat there, from time to time, his wife would come in and give him on a pat on the shoulder, and till finally at two o'clock she came in and put down a cup of hot coffee and kissed him good night. And in his ways as the um, farmer sat there, tapping his fingers on the desk. He looked over and he saw a picture of himself during World War I with his soldier buddies. And as he, he looked over at the picture, he also looked over at his coffee cup and the steam coming out. And as he looked at these two things and... An idea struck him, and at that moment he knew exactly what he would do. So the next morning he did what he usually did. He um, got up, he um, uh, took a shower, he put on his clothes, he went down, he had breakfast, he, he kissed his wife, and then he ran off to the shed, and he got some sleeping gas and a sleeping gas mask, and then he got a potato sack, and he went out, and then he began to spray the uh, sleeping gas all over the yard. And the chipmunks began to fall out of the trees like flies, and they began to fall asleep on the ground. And when the farmer was finished, he began to grab hold of the chipmunks, whole shovelfuls, and begin to throw them all in the sack. And when he had gotten as many as he could, he, he grabbed hold of the sack and he threw it on the back of the red pickup truck, and he drove down to Centurin Field, and he uh, threw down the... Um, the uh, bag and poured out the chickmunks onto the dry ground with a hard heart, and then he drove back home. Well, as the chickmunks laid there, they began to wake up one by one, and it started to rain, and the chickmunks all began to chatter to themselves, almost as if they were discussing what exactly had occurred and where the hell they were, until eventually they began to run off into the woods. Well, anyways, um, Farmer um, Joseph uh, woke up the next morning to the crow of his rooster, and he went about his usual routine, uh, you know the basics. And after he had kissed his wife goodbye, he, um, he walked out onto the front porch, and he couldn't believe what his eyes saw. For it seemed that there was as many chickmunks there that morning that there was uh, the other day. Well, um, Farmer Joseph decided that it must be just because um, there was still a lot to get take care of. There, there were still chipmunks running into the yard. And so he got the sleeping gas, and he began to pour it all around, and the chipmunks dropped from the trees like flies. 
and he, he grabbed them all up, and he, he threw them in the sack, and he, he got the truck, and he went down to Centerney Field, and he dumped them off. And he did this two more times, but every time when he'd wake up in the morning and go out onto the front porch, it seemed like there were just as many chipmunks there as there had been before, and he couldn't figure out what was going on. And one day he was sitting there, and he was thinking about this, and his wife came over, and, and she said to him, You don't suppose that those are the same chipmunks from before, do you? And um, Farmer Joseph said, No, no, that's impossible. Th that field's twenty miles away from here. And his wife shrugged her shoulders, but the more the farmer began to think about it, the more he realized that his wife might be on to something. So he came up with a plan. That next morning, he did the same thing he usually did, only this time he spray-painted each of the chipmunks' butts orange. And then he, he grabbed hold of them, and he, he put them in a sack, and he, he drove down to the field. Anyways, once he got to the field, he, he dumped them all off on the dry ground, and he, he drove off. Anyways, the next morning, he was a bit excited. He, he raced down, and he didn't even go through his t same routine, which was very odd for him, but he, he did manage to remember to kiss his wife goodbye. And as he walked out onto the front porch, he couldn't believe his eyes, for there the chipmunks were, all hopping around with orange butts, each and every single one of them. And when the farmer saw this, he began to chuckle, and he fell down on the ground and he began to laugh harder than he had ever laughed in his entire life. And when he stood up, for some reason he decided that he wouldn't bother with the chipmunks that day, and he didn't the next day either. And so I, I suppose that even today, maybe those chipmunks are hopping around with their orange butts. And I suggest if you ever go down by um, uh, Farmer Joseph's house, maybe you go and uh, take a look at his backyard. See if you, you see the chipmunks still there. A testament to the true resilience of life. As always, sweet dreams and good night. <laughs>